Hey, my name is Andrew. I am a barefoot runner who used to run in cushion shoes, and I also worked in a running store for three years. So today we're gonna to talk about why are running shoes so expensive? A few days ago, I got a comment on one of my videos from HTFCM. He says, I think I would love Vivo barefoot shoes. They look the best, but they are so damn expensive. And that got me thinking because when I was working as a salesman, I got the same complaint from people about cushion running shoes. So I thought maybe I would do a little cage match between cushion shoes and barefoot shoes to figure out which one is more expensive and which one is a better deal for your wallet and your body. So let's get into it. There are a lot of things that go into the cost of a shoe, but I think the thing that most people care about is the durability. How long is the shoe gonna last? The average life of a cushion running shoe is around three to 500 miles. So if you're running five miles a day and five days a week, that means that it's probably gonna last you about six months for a cushion running shoe. Right now the Brooks Ghost is $130, so that would break out to around $22 a month. On the other hand, barefoot shoes don't really have a standard life, but my Primus Lights, I've been running these for about three thousand miles and they're still going which is crazy been running three to four miles six days a week for the past three years so that breaks out to around four dollars a month now whether you consider twenty two dollars a month for a cushion shoe to be expensive it's kind of up to your budget but i think four dollars a month for a barefoot shoe is pretty affordable for anyone so i'm gonna give round one to barefoot shoes I remember the first time I put on a Hoka Bondi, it was this gigantic shoe, it looked kind of like this one, and it had this huge platform on it, it felt like running on a cloud, you know, that really soft experience, and it was amazing. But the problem was, after a couple hundred miles, it started to break down with the cushion, and then it went from feeling springy to feeling like I was running through a swamp. Yeah. I had the same problem with other cushion shoes that I wore like the A6DS Trainer, the New Balance 1400, and even the Ultra Vanish, which was surprising because it was only 14 millimeters, so there wasn't much to break down. But basically, no matter how little cushion I had, as soon as it started to break down, every mile in those shoes felt worse than the mile before. Barefoot shoes though, there's no cushion to break down, so they're gonna feel the same after 3,000 miles as they felt when you bought them. The question is, is that a good feeling? I think so, but there's definitely a learning curve to barefoot shoes. It can take a couple months to build up the callus you need on the bottom of your feet. And then it took me probably another four months to get my speed and endurance back to where they were when I was running in cushion shoes. And it seemed like kind of a hassle, but what you're really doing is building up a cushioning system that regenerates for free for the rest of your life. The other thing about barefoot shoes is that they allow you to feel the ground you're running on and it opens up this whole world of sensory information that you're never going to get running on a cushioned shoe. Imagine you wore boxing gloves on your hands for your entire life, and then one day you just took them off and like experienced the magic of touching things for the first time. In terms of a winner, I think cushion shoes can feel great right out of the box, but the experience of running on a cloud is not that practical and it gets worse over time. So round two goes to barefoot shoes. When it comes to the fit of a running shoe, there are basically two things that matter. The width of the shoe and the shape of the toe box. After trying on hundreds of shoes, I can tell you that most brands are way too narrow. Nike, Asics, Mizuno, Saucony, they all scrunch up your feet and cut off circulation, which is saying something because I used to run an Adidas Sambas for like 10 years and my feet are already super narrow. Probably the widest brands right now are Brooks, New Balance, and Ultra, but of those three, Ultra is the only brand that actually makes shoes shaped like feet. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous when a brand's entire selling point is that they make shoes shaped like feet. Like, why aren't all the shoes shaped like feet? The nice thing about barefoot shoes is that pretty much all of the brands have a really wide roomy fit with plenty of space for your toes to splay out and do what they're supposed to do naturally. So round three goes to barefoot shoes.
the hard thing about trying to find evidence for cushion running versus barefoot running is that most of the studies are done by the actual brands selling the shoes on both sides of the fence. On top of that, there's so many things that can contribute to injuries like mileage and racing and nutrition and stretching and terrain. It's really hard to just isolate the shoes. So the only thing that you can 100% trust is your own experience. From 2005 to 2017, I ran in cushioned shoes and I was getting injured all the time. Hip pain, back pain, calf strains, plantar fasciitis, shin splints, you name it. I was really skeptical of barefoot shoes at first, but after a couple weeks of training, my problems started to disappear one by one. At this point, I've been running every day for the past three years and I haven't had a single injury. Like, zero. When I go out for a run now, I just feel more in touch with my body so I know how far I can push myself and when I need to back off. Honestly, I don't ever expect to be injured again, which feels so good to say after years of dealing with problems as a runner. So round four goes to barefoot shoes. I'd like to say that we live in a world where function comes first, but we all know the truth, which is that sometimes those fresh Nikes look so good and we want them so bad that we will buy them even if we know they're not right for us. I get it. I worked as a freelance designer for five years and some of the barefoot brands out there are just dropping the ball. For example, you look at Zero Shoes and I would not be caught dead in these things. They just look cheap and tacky. On the other hand, there are definitely some barefoot brands that are killing it. Like look at Vivo Barefoot, for example. A lot of their shoes have that minimal high-end vibe that you would expect from a much bigger company. The other thing to remember is that looks are subjective. The first time I wore my Vibram Five Fingers, I was embarrassed because they just look so different. Oh my god, you're such a freak. But then it started to be fun because people would always notice them and I would end up having conversations I never would have had if I was just wearing what everyone else was wearing. I think round five is a tie because it really depends on your goal. Like if you want to fit in and go with what's popular, then cushion shoes are going to do that for you. And if you want to stand out and be a little more provocative, then barefoot shoes are a great option. A lot of mainstream running brands are starting to recycle and use more eco-friendly materials, which is great. But let's be honest, cushion breaks down and for every one pair of barefoot shoes I buy, a cushion runner will have to buy 10. So that creates a huge amount of waste and it's not even close for this round. Round six goes to barefoot shoes. One thing I hear barefoot runners say over and over again is that once they start running without cushion, there's no way they would ever go back. And I think the reason for that is that the cost of barefoot running versus cushion running is so night and day. Barefoot shoes save you money. You're paying $4 versus $22 a month. They allow you to reconnect with the ground and build callus and strengthen your muscles and develop a better stride, all of which is a cushioning system that keeps regenerating for the rest of your life. Barefoot shoes also fit better. They're shaped like a human feet, which allows allows your toes to move the way they're supposed to. They prevent injuries and all the side effects of being injured, like wasting time at the doctor, not being able to run, having to go through horrible surgeries and buy expensive orthotics, all that bullshit. Also, I know some people might disagree, but I love the way barefoot shoes look. Well, some of them at least. They start conversations and help you put yourself out there without worrying about what other people are gonna think. Finally, barefoot shoes are better for the planet. They last longer, they use more sustainable materials, and I don't know, I just feel happier wearing them. For all those reasons and after three years of experiencing them, I think barefoot shoes are a total bargain and I'm never going to waste money on cushion ever again. <sighs> Which brings me to my last point. If cushion shoes are such a bad deal, then how do mainstream brands like Nike get away with overcharging customers year after year? And if barefoot shoes are so good for you, then why are they not more popular? Simple answer is profit. A cushion shoe needs to be replaced 10 times as often as a barefoot shoe. So that means 10 times more profit for Nike. And the more profitable an industry is, the more money those companies have to invest in marketing that makes their products look like the best option. So if you and I wanna stay healthy and connected to our bodies and moving the planet in a better direction, then it's up to us to invest in brands that put runners before profit. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, hit that like button down below because I'm gonna be doing more videos like this on barefoot running and creative minimalism. So stay tuned and I'll see you next time. Peace.